So, hello and welcome to lesson 2 on functional analysis. So, I'm Budo Kanrino, a final year student of mathematics, KNUST, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos and don't forget to like the video if it helps you. So, this happens to be the second lesson. And in this lesson, we are going to review metric spaces. Okay. So, let's start. So let's define what a metric is, okay? So you know, um, a metric is distance. That's what a metric is. So let's go through the formal definition. So a metric on a set X is a function D such that S cross X, okay? So then Cross here is a Cartesian product. That's all the combination of the elements in X maps onto R with the following properties. Okay, so um, the following properties are very important in defining metric spaces. So the first property is that the distance between X and Y is always greater than or equal to zero. You know, distance is always positive. Okay, it's either it is zero or positive. In the case, the second property explains the case when it is zero. So it is only zero if x is equal to y. So it is only zero if um, you are measuring a distance at a point, at the same point, okay? If not, you always get something which is positive. Distance can never be negative, okay? And the third property is what we call the symmetric property. And that one says that the distance between x and y, so for instance, if I have x here and y here, the distance from x to y is the same as the distance from y to x. That's how you can see here. And the last one is a triangular um, inequality, okay, or the subadductivity. We say that the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z is greater than or equal to the distance between x and z, okay? So it's the same as the distance between x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z. And this is what it means. So we can represent this using the a triangle, okay? So let's consider this triangle. And let's say I have a point x here, z here, and y here. Okay. So, you know, if I want to move from x to z, I can just be here and move to z. Okay. So, you can see that the distance that it takes from, to move from x to z is shorter as compared to moving from x to y and moving from what y to z okay so that's an explanation to the fourth point okay so when these four properties are satisfied then we have a metric space okay so we call d x y the distance between x and y and the metric d a metric space okay so that's it. So um, that's the definition for metric spaces. And I told you to know the following, that property theory is called the symmetric property or the, yes. And the property four is called the triangular inequality or the triangle inequality and or the subadditivity. Okay. And so there's the symmetric, there's the subadditivity or triangle inequality. So metric spaces are topological spaces that result from having a means from measuring distance between points in the underlying sets. And this notation of measuring distance goes beyond stretching out a measuring tape to see how far two points are. Okay. So now let's even have explained the properties. Okay. This here gives an explanation of the properties. 
So note that D has the property to be expected when we measure the distance between points. So the distance between two points is at least zero. And it equals zero only when the two points are the same. And the distance from point x to y is the same as the distance from point y to x. And finally, the distance to travel from x to y and then y to z is never shorter than the distance to travel directly from x to z. So these points here happen to be the explanation to the various properties that we discussed for D. Okay. So note that the distance D is always row valued, finite, and non-negative. So as I said, you can never measure a distance and get a negative number, and it is always finite, okay, and row valued. So you should know that. So now let's talk about examples of metric spaces, okay. So the first example we will talk about will be the Euclidean metric or the standard metric on the set of real numbers, which is defined here. So this is what we call the standard metric or the Euclidean metric on R. Okay. So for example, when you have the distance between 2 and 4, based on the Euclidean metric, it will be the distance between like the absolute value 2 minus 4, which will give you 2. Okay, so that means the distance between 2 and 4 based on the Euclidean metric will be 2. Okay. And we also have something that we call the discrete metric space. Okay. So that one is also defined by this piecewise function. So what that one says is that if two points are not the same, okay, then the distance between them is always one. And if the two points are the same, then the distance between them is zero. So that what we call the discrete metric space. Okay, so these are some examples of metric spaces. So know that now that we've gone through metric spaces, we like to talk about open and closed balls, okay? So, um, let's take the definition for an open ball. So, let x d be a metric space. For x in our set or space x, okay? So, x which happens to be in our set, capital X, and r, which is greater than zero. We define the open ball of radius R centered at X naught to the set. Right, so there is it. So it is an open ball when the distance between X and Y is always less than the radius. Okay, so I will explain this with diagrams so that you understand that. So the explanation is given here. When you take an open ball, the distance between X that's the center in any point in a ball y is less than the radius okay so you can think about an open ball as a ball without the boundary included so you see we have a ball like this okay if this is the radius r that means if you are saying that this is the center x and the distance between x and any point in a ball y is less than r that means that we are not considering the points or the boundary point because when we consider them then of course we are going to get point which will be equal to the radius okay so that means that an open ball is just like you take this ball then you consider everything inside except the boundary okay so that's what will give you an open ball then now let's talk about a closed ball so for a closed ball, the distance between x and y is less than or equal to r. Okay, so for a closed ball, it can be thought of as a ball with its boundary. Okay, so you see we have a ball here, right? And it includes its boundary. So with the open ball, we said it didn't include a boundary, but with the closed ball, we can include a boundary. So it's everything inside plus everything outside okay like plus everything on it sorry plus a boundary so that's what um, a closed ball is so you should know the difference between the two okay so now let's have what we call the metric topology or canonical topology okay so when you talk about metric topology 
it is just a topology which is induced by a metric d on a metric space okay and the basis for generating such a topology is what we can see here so for example let us take a look at the discrete metric space so we said that the discrete metric space is an example of a metric space and it was given by what we can see here so if we decide to induce um if we decide to form a topology out of this okay so the topology which will be induced by this metric space discrete metric space will be so we form open walls right so um we are going to have a point okay if the radius is less than one okay because um if the radius is less than one because we are saying that the distance between from the center right the distance from the center that's from the definition of the discrete metric space you are seeing that the distance from the center if s happens to be the center okay um to any other point okay should be one okay and here we interchange the equality so this one is when x is not equal to when x is equal to y okay so you can see that here all right uh, no okay so yeah it's correct okay so there is it so that means that um when the radius is less than one we'll have just the point and there'll be nothing around it okay but if the radius is greater than or equal to one then the open ball will be will contain all the set x so that's the reason why the um, topology induced by the discrete metric space is given by what we can see here okay so it's like let's draw this open ball an explanation to it okay then we have a point we have points several points in it several points Then what the metric topology, the discrete um, topology metric space, what the discrete metric space says is that as soon as, as far as the points are not the same, okay, the distance between them, right, is always one. The distance between them is always one. Okay, so that means that when you take these two points, for instance, the distance between them is one. When you take these two points, it is one. So this point, when you take a radius of one, the radius of one to it is everything around it. I hope you can get that. Uh huh. But if you take this point and you try to maybe take a radius which is less than one, maybe it can be zero point nine. You realize that zero point nine to it would just be itself. Okay. So that's the reason why if the radius is less than one. Then we are saying that we have just that set. But if you get it on equal to one, then we have everything in that set. Okay. So there is a topology induced by the discrete metric space. Okay. So in our next video, that's it for our review on metric spaces. So in our next video, we'll talk about vector spaces. So see you in the next video.